How's it going everybody? Clayton here at eTrailer.com. Here at eTrailer, we install, test, and review a lot of different products to help you as a customer make a more educated decision before your purchase. Today we're going to be working on a 2020 Ford F-150. We're going to be taking a look at, and I'll be showing you how to install, the Firestone Ride Right Air Helper Springs. Now adding air helper springs, or commonly referred to as airbags, to your vehicle suspension is going to be an awesome upgrade. Not only is it going to help us tow better, it's going to make the ride a whole lot more comfortable and it's actually going to give us more control of the vehicle, keeping us safe. Now when it comes to choosing airbags, there are a few different brands out there. My personal favorite is always going to be Firestone. This is what our airbags are going to look like installed. As you can see, they do sit right over your leaf springs, so that's pretty nice. We're not going to have to do any drilling, cutting, welding, or anything like that. I just like the way that the bags are constructed. They are going to be double convoluted. What that means is there's going to be a metal ring here in the middle that actually goes between the airbag and that's why it looks like two separate bags but it's actually one and this just helps it from deteriorating over time it's also going to be keep it a little bit stronger that way that bag isn't sagging and collapsing on itself the whole system just works really good especially since it is crimped into this metal plate on the top and bottom and another added benefit to this is whenever we get our truck serviced we can let that axle hang there are a couple brands out there that you're not able to let that rear axle hang, so that is an awesome feature. Our air springs are gonna give us 4,800 pounds of load leveling support. Now you wanna keep in mind, this is not going to increase your towing capacity. It's just gonna help with that 4,800 pounds within that max capacity. You wanna check with your owner's manual and check your towing ratings just to make sure that you don't exceed them. Our PSI ratings are gonna range between a minimum of five PSI and a maximum of 100 PSI. So you just want to keep that in mind, never to go below that 5 PSI. And honestly, for day-to-day -day use, I like to leave mine around 10. That way you're not letting this rubber break down and crack over time. It's just going to keep enough pressure on there to make sure you're not going to have to replace these in a few years. Now there are going to be a few different ways to run your air. I'll explain that more in the installation portion, but our customer has a single path. So that means we're going to have our single air fitting back here. We're going to air this up to get air into our bags. Now it's time to see how our F-150 is going to perform before we have any suspension enhancement. We want to get a beforehand measurement, so that's going to be before we add any weight to the bed of our truck, or before we install our air helper springs. So we'll start measuring back here at the rear, from the center of the wheel to the center of our wheel well. It's going to be a little over 40 inches. And in the front, we're looking at about 38 inches. Now let's add some weight. Now we have about 1,000 pounds in the bed of our truck so we can get our measurements. In the rear, we are sitting right about 37 inches. So we actually dropped three inches in the rear. Let's head up front and check that measurement. We are sitting about 39 inches. So we actually picked up about an inch in the front. Now this is gonna do a couple things. First off, it's gonna reposition our headlights. So now they're gonna be pointed more upwards. We're not gonna be able to see the road as well. So this is really gonna inhibit our visibility at night. And another thing that we're going to get is less braking power because we're actually going to have less tire contacting the road. And it's also going to tow in our tires, which is going to create uneven tread wear. And if we're hauling a lot, that's going to definitely run through some tires. Let's head out on our test course here at eTrailer and see how it performs with the weight in the bed. We're going to start out by hitting our bumps course. Our first set of bumps are going to be alternating bumps. So this is going to assimilate like a big pothole or any bumps in the road or anything like that. We can definitely feel that weight kind of slamming the back of the truck down, making it very uncomfortable. Now we're going to move up to our straight bumps. Now this one is going to be like a speed bump or a big curb or anything like that. This is where we're really going to feel that back end kind of drop down and make it very uncomfortable. Now we're going to hit our slalom course. And this is why we use water tanks because we can really feel that water kind of bring us left and right whenever we start steering our truck. And we definitely feel that weight back there. It's kind of controlling the truck versus me controlling it. And this just creates a lot of body roll, making it hard to make tight maneuvers. After hitting our test course, it's very noticeable that we have this much weight in the bed of our truck. Like I said, it's gonna make it very uncomfortable and kind of hard to control if I'm being honest. Now, having this much weight is gonna do a couple things. It's really gonna wear on our stock suspension so that's gonna max out our leaf springs or coils depending on what you have. And then what's actually gonna happen is our axle is gonna to have to make up that difference. So we need to put as little stress on our axle as possible, especially when we're hauling. 
Now, like I said, this is very hard to control whenever you're doing those left and right maneuvers. So we have, if we have to make a quick maneuver out on the roadway, it's gonna be kind of nerve wracking. So let's head in the shop and get these airbags installed. To begin our installation, we wanna lower down our spare tire. Now you don't have to do this, but I highly recommend it just to have a little bit more room. Once we get that spare tire out of the way, we now wanna remove our heat shield. We're gonna have a bolt here on the side and then two on the top. We're just gonna use a 13 millimeter socket to get that removed. Now you can just take this off and set it off to the side. Now we need to remove our factory jount stopper. Our customer already had Timberns installed, so this is going to be a little bit different. And in your case at home, you're going to be using a 15 millimeter wrench and removing a nut that supports the jount stopper in the bottom of the housing. Ours is going to be a 17 and that nut is going to go right into the frame rail. We want to make sure to save that factory bolt as well. Since we did have Timberns, we need to remove our lower stopper. Uh, if you do have just a factory jount stopper, this will not be here. We now want to grab one of our airbags and our recording brackets. We're going to start with our upper frame bracket. This isn't going to be partial to each side, so you don't have to worry about that. We then want to grab our airbag. We're going to remove our rubber covers. Then we're gonna take this flange and we want it facing us. We're gonna put those two studs on the airbags through the forwardmost holes. Then we'll add a flange nut. We can now grab a 9 16th socket. We're gonna tighten these down. Now we want to leave everything kind of hand tight, that way we can maneuver it into place and we can come back and tighten it down later. We now want to grab our 90 degree air fitting that's going to be provided. We're going to thread that into the top of our air spring. We just want to get that started. Now this flange is going to sit on the outside of our frame rail, so we want our air fitting facing backwards. Now as you can see there is some thread locker on there, we don't want to tighten that all the way down, we just want a couple of threads left. So then you can grab a half inch wrench and tighten this down. We now want to grab our lower bracket as well. What we're going to do is we're going to flip our whole assembly over like this. We're going to have that flange on the left side. When you pick up this lower bracket, you're going to see that this side's more angled and this side only has a tab. We want this tab on the same side as this flange. So we'll flip it over like this. We can grab our provided bolt. We're just gonna thread that into the bottom of our air spring through the bracket. And again, you just wanna leave it hand tight for now. We now wanna grab our uppermost frame bracket. These are gonna be marked left and right. So you just wanna make sure that you get the markings right with whichever side you're working on. We're gonna take this with our factory bolt. This is basically gonna go where that jount stopper was. So we're gonna lift it up into place and then thread in our factory bolt on the bottom. Now we just want to grab our recording socket and tighten it down. We're going to have two holes on the outside of that frame bracket that are going to line up with a hole in our frame rail. We're going to grab one of our supplied bolts and our handle nut. We're going to take this handle nut, feed it up through this opening, line it up with that bolt hole and get this started from the outside. Now you might have to play with these angles a little bit to get that started, but just give it some patience. And you can definitely feel that handle nut with the bolt. Like I said, just give it some patience and it shouldn't be an issue. And you are gonna have another one towards the rear of that bracket. And on your driver's side, you're gonna need to watch out for these factory lines. Whenever you tighten those down, just be cautious of where that handle nut bracket is. We can now come back with a 9 16th socket and just tighten down our hardware. We don't want to over tighten these, just get them nice and snug. Now I'm going to take our whole assembly. We'll kind of have to come in behind your leaf springs, kind of work that into place. 
You do want to be cautious with your brake lines, make sure that you're not catching those along the way. You want to make sure that this upper bracket fits inside of the frame bracket, like that. And you can push that whole assembly over our leaf spring. Our next sequence of hardware is going to be our small bolt with the flange nut, and we're going to feed that through this bracket in our air spring. We're going to be adding a flange nut. We can now repeat that same process on the front side of our airbag. We can now grab our U-bolt. This is going to go through that bottom bracket around our leaf spring. And it is kind of tight just due to that powder coating. You can either use the nuts to tighten that down or just kind of push it through there. Then on the top side, we're going to be adding a flange nut. And I just want to come back with a 9 16th socket and tighten down our hardware. For these U-bolts, you want to go back and forth and making sure to tighten them evenly. We now want to come back and tighten down the rest of our hardware, and after that we'll torque it down to the amount specified in our instructions. We now want to grab our airline tubing, we're going to measure it out somewhere in the middle, grab our airline cutters. We want to make sure to use airline cutters, that way we get a good, crisp, clean cut on these edges. I wouldn't recommend using a pocket knife, and you can always pick up those airline cutters here at E-Trailer. We now want to grab that freshly cut end, we're going to come up to our air fitting at the top of our air spring, we're going to push that in. You'll feel it kind of lock into place. I always like to give it a little pull and make sure it's not going anywhere. We're going to do the same process on the other side. Then I'll route our airline tubing to the back and we'll catch up with you there. Our airline is going to come out of our air spring, come up over our frame rail, and I slid on our protective coating just to protect it from rubbing there on the metal. Then it's going to follow this factory wiring all the way to right here. And it's going to be the exact same way on the other side. Now there are a few different ways that we can run our airlines, at least to our fittings. Now our customer is going to do a single path. So what that's going to mean is it's going to come to a T-fitting, then it's going to come out to one fitting to air up both airbags. But if you want to do dual path, you'll run both of these back, then add your fittings here at the hitch using the supplied hitch bracket. It's going to come with zip ties that you'll run around your hitch and zip tie it down. You'll just install those air fittings into here. We're just going to push those airlines into the back of that fitting like we did our airbags. Then our last option is going to be an air compressor. You can find more about that here at eTrailer.com. But if you are doing an air compressor, I would suggest not cutting your lines any shorter just to have that little bit of extra room to work. Our customer, like I said, is going to do that single path and he's going to mount that air fitting right here next to the license plate. There's a good area behind the bumper that's pretty open. So we just want to grab our drill bit and kind of feel around and the plastic is kind of thin. So you're going to be able to feel that on the back side. Once you have a good spot, you can just drill it out with a bit that's a similar size to that fitting. We're then going to grab our air fitting. We're going to take our nut off, slide on a flat washer, and we're going to take this and slide it through the hole that we just drilled. Then on the front side, we're going to be adding another flat washer and we're going to reinstall that hex nut. Now we just want to come back and tighten that down. We just want to measure off our airline tubing. Again, we want to make sure we get those nice clean cuts. And we can grab our T-fitting. We'll just push that in. And I measure off our other airline tube as well. We'll cut that right about there. We'll push that into the other end. We'll then push our excess line into there, kind of measure out to our fitting down here. You want to make sure that this is going to stay up and out of the way of the spare tire. Right here should be pretty good. So we'll measure this here. Give that a cut rub off our burrs, and push that into our fitting. Now we can put some air in it and test everything out.
I mean, I'm gonna take some soapy water and spray down all of our fittings. We're gonna be looking for really fast growing bubbles. This is gonna let us know if we have a leak. And all of these fittings look good, so now I can move up to the airbags. We are now good to reinstall our heat shield and our spare tire. If you do have any leaks, it's pretty easy to fix. You're just gonna push down on the fitting, pull out the wire, cut it again, and replace it, and repeat until you don't have any leaks. We now have our air springs installed, and they'll wait back in the bed of our truck. Now, I do wanna say we only have about 35 PSI in our bags, so that's not even half of what we can do. So let's get a few measurements here just to see where we're at. And we're back to within a quarter inch of stock ride height, so that's really nice. Let's jump up front and check there. We're sitting right back at stock ride height. So this is awesome. This is gonna keep our headlights in the right direction. We're gonna get the same braking pressure and it's not gonna feel loose. We're gonna have full control of our vehicle. We're now ready to go back to our bumps course with our airbags installed. And right off the bat, it feels a whole lot smoother going over these alternating bumps. It isn't throwing us around as much. We're kind of dropping the truck down like I said before. But having that normal ride height is really gonna make it a lot more controllable. And where we noticed a big difference earlier was gonna be these straight bumps. So now that we're going over these with the airbags, it almost feels like nothing's in the bed of our truck, and that's really what we want. We're now ready to hit our slalom course. Again, we're gonna do those left and right maneuvers and really feel the weight of the truck. And honestly, there's a lot less body roll. It's definitely a lot more comfortable. And as you saw, this thing did perform pretty well. I really like the way it turned out. It made it ride a whole lot better with all that extra weight. That being said, that's going to do it for our look at and our installation of Firestone's Ride Right Air Helper Springs on our 2020 Ford F-150.